the social benefits of these sort of community arts projects are enormous. This is going to put Carnarvon back on the map and people are going to know where we are. Canalpin is like so many other small towns on the main road between Adelaide and Melbourne. With its population down to around 200, disused and decaying buildings serve as a reminder of better days. Of a time when there were banks, two general stores and a fancy railway station. Now the trains pass without stopping. The station has long since gone. Trucks and cars whiz through with little to tempt them to pull in. I do a lot of speaking at schools and um, I was invited back to my home school, Canalpin Primary School, to talk about the three tiers of local government. Um, and I was given a very difficult question um, by one of the students. Uh, he asked me why Canalpin wasn't as beautiful as some of the other towns in our council area. Uh, I was a little bit floored for an answer, but this is a town that I grew up in, so I went for a drive afterwards and I looked at it through a lot older eyes than when I was here and noticed that the town had really declined. Nat Traeger is now a director with the Coorong District Council. That question a year ago set her hometown on a path to revitalise itself through art. I reckon that'll just about do it, just a little bit off there, because we've got to have grey outline all around between. In the old town hall, a group of 14, mostly women, have put in well over a thousand hours making mosaic panels to grace the boring old toilet walls on the main road. This little wren looks so insignificant in the whole design, yeah. but you look at the panel and it's just such a beautiful feature of the panel. This is one of six projects in which the locals have been guided by professional artists. They've put together appliques to fill the windows of an empty shop. An eagle made of metal chips stares out from the sports ground. And tunnel vision is a series of children's art in the pedestrian tunnel under the railway line. But the most ambitious project of all would be changing the face of the largest landmark in town, the grain silos. Wowza. <laughs> it's good to see you all here and I appreciate you all coming tonight, so thanks for that. This is going to put Carnarvon back on the map and people are going to know where we are. On a hot evening, in early February, the town Guido. welcomed Brisbane-based mural artist Guido Van Helton. Guido arrived last Wednesday. We had our meet and greet with our locals at the football club. So now he is one of us. He's a local. Guido Van Helton is as prolific as he is creative. His paintings are plastered across large structures all over the world, from these spent nuclear reactors at Chernobyl to domestically abused women in Mexico. He likes to depict people from the area. In Australia, he's painted the train carriages at Manildra, a water tank at Winton, and most famously, the silos in the Victorian wheat belt town of Brim. We knew from the outset we needed a flagship project and he is just such a fine artist, works all over the world and based on the um, overwhelming um, media around the brim silos, we decided that um, he was the artist that we wanted to come here as the, our major flagship project. Well everyone's very optimistic. Saying that I, <laughs> no, haven't no even, I haven't done anything yet. No, but the, but the <laughs> fact is, Di Gordon is the district council's arts coordinator, responsible for orchestrating the creating Canalpin projects, including getting Guido on board. So, what was that moment like when you knew that he was going to come along? It was amazing. I didn't sleep that night. It was just, 
it was like um, just blessings raining down. It was sort of such a great moment. And from that moment forward, we knew that it was going to happen, that everything was going to fall into place because the goodwill was there. We had um, funding, we had council support and, and community you know, right behind it. So he's just been a delight to have. This was sort of been planned for about a year. And, you know, I've had many sort of offers to come here and there, but these guys were, were quite serious. And I found that uh, through their responses that they, they did actually want to do this. And they had some, a lot of community support behind it. And this is why I ended up here. It's become a bit of a passion for me though, because I, I realise how much like, it can do. The quietly spoken artist likes to arrive in town the week before he starts work and get to understand the community. I like to be, you know, quite gentle. Like I don't want to come here and just uh, have a have a pre-planned vision of what I expect it to be. I come here with a completely clean slate, and that, in that way, I, I can I can sort of, you know, sort of feel it out a bit and see what people are into and see how the community is and what I can bring to it that that can represent it. In Canalpin, there was one place that really captured his attention: the local primary school. With just 38 students, when Principal Margaret Elvey arrived a few years back, she was told to prepare for the worst. When I came initially, it was, well, this town's on its last legs, and I was told that there was only going to be 27 students at the school, if I was lucky, and that it would be going down, there'd be no school here, you know, shortly. But um, the town is looking up, and everyone's being far more positive, and there's a general feel of this is a great place to be. You might have noticed that someone was out in the yard at uh, before the bell went. Did anyone see who was out in the yard this morning? Caesar? Uh, was it Guido? Yes, you would have noticed that Guido is here today. Guido was already a familiar sight at the school. This was his second visit. So I guess the thing that I would like to know is how much excitement there is around town about the fact that there will be paintings on your silos and are you thinking about what's going to go up there? I think it was going to look really good once it's done and I'm not sure what's going to be up there. And do you have any ideas as to what you'd like to see up there? Um, well, I guess um, b um, big things which happen around Canalpin. Yeah, things like that. And like um, good people in Varun and like people um, who have been well known here and things like that, yeah. So let's go outside and pick a partner. <laughs> In a lot of small areas I find like people really want to focus on the on the past and the and history of a town or the or the industry and all those themes I really want to avoid. I'll draw you. What's your name? Alicia. Nice to meet you. You know, I want to really try and make something that sort of speaks to not only people in this town but Australia wide. And so through that I've sort of been uh, doing a couple of workshops with the, with the children at the Coonabin State Primary. How old were you when you first started drawing? I've always been drawing. I think they represent an image of the future that I think is quite positive and playful and also very neutral. Yeah, I want to avoid yeah, leaning on this uh, idea of the past and I think we should now focus on the future. I think it, that, like one of the hardest parts is doing the hands. Yeah, hands mm. can be hard. So, first of all, go and find your own space around the tanks. Well done, Joyce. <laughs> Not in between. After Not more than a week of being embedded in the community, staying at the caravan park and taking photos at the school, businesses and in the town's archives, Guido has developed some firm ideas about who and what he'll paint. His plans have been shown to the town's arts committee and Nat Traeger now needs to let a few more in on the secret. So what we've settled on is five. There's five families here. We have um, five individual students, your children, um, that he has chosen based on the strength of the photo. So he doesn't know who you are, he doesn't know who your children are, um, but what he saw in your children was a sense of creativity um, and hope for the future. So without further ado, here they are. Step, have a look. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> wow. 
So with this one, Kimmy and Brenton, mm. yep. that is wrapped around the corner. So you'll see her um, as you come into Canalpin. Yep. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> For the next 25 years. Yeah. And then these three here is what you'll see from yeah. the front. And then here, obviously, drawing, you'll see this from Melbourne and wrapping around here to young Blake. Is this Blake? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, how are you feeling about that? Oh my God, that's yeah. amazing. Speechless. <laughs> Speechless. You're not upset? No. 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 I, I just want to go. <laughs> so, your, your yep. kids will be immortalised forever. <laughs> as a silo kid of Canalpin, or kids of Canalpin. Could write a song about it, it's kids of America, but kids of Canalpin. It's the night before Guido is set to begin painting. He's striking up some reference points on the 30 metre high concrete canvas. Across the road, it's all systems go preparing for the town's first new business in ages, a cafe set to capitalise on the impending attraction. The Dewhurst family has owned this property for decades. It was a bakery, but has been closed for 35 years. You want to open tomorrow morning. It's already 6.30 the yep. night beforehand. What happens tonight for you? No sleep. So it should just be all go tonight. The builders are here and Heaps of friends are here helping us get it up and running, so it should get open in the morning. Day one, and the first faint stroke of paint. The Silo Cafe has managed to open in time. Last time I was here, I had the warm apple, sweet waffles. Down the road, the Dutch-born owner of the town's iconic little waffle house is bracing for a waffle and jaffle-buying bonanza. Speculation about what will appear on the silos is at fever pitch. It's a big bar, so everybody seems to be really positive and it, it really pulls the town together. You get some people coming in that are very excited the buzz is up and about and everyone's like, oh, we can't wait, this is going to be exciting. And then you get your people that come in and go, yeah, it's ridiculous, I don't even know why they're doing it. Mm. So you do get two ends of the scale on that one as well. Um, people have got their ideas on what is going to be on there, what should be on there. So there's talk about that. Um, but yeah, generally, as a whole, it's a positive vibe, which is good. Mm. Jonesy and Winnie, as they like to be called, are newcomers having taken up the lease on the town's only pub just six months ago. They can't believe their good timing. After we had already signed the contract, we hadn't moved in yet, but then we got an email and we found out about the silos being painted in, in Canalpin and I, I Googled it and it came up with Brim. And so I looked into that and I thought, wow, that's insane. Um, and that Brim was a quiet little town and no one knew about it and now it's just generated so much traffic just to go see the silos. Um, and to hear that that was happening here, oh, just blew our minds, didn't it? Yeah. A little over a week later, and things are already beginning to look up in this town. The artist is putting the finishing touches on the image of six-year-old Kiara Lesky. Well, I just want to comb that hair, it's just so amazingly realistic, yes. It's just beautiful. She's not even taking it too bad. She, some days she, I ask her, do you want to go for a drive and have a look? And she's like, no, I'll see it when it's finished, Mum. So I tend not to push the point. Um, but then other times, like just running around at school and playing, like they said she just shrugs it off and goes off and does her thing again. So yeah, it hasn't, hasn't affected her too much at this stage. So. Even at this early stage, many of the 5,000 vehicles that pass through here each day are stopping and spending their money in Canalpin. We're finding that the stopping rate at the moment is around 40 per hour um, and lots of great feedback from the businesses because everyone's benefiting. We just all have waffles for breakfast, so <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah, so we stopped and had breakfast and came and had a look. As Grey Nomads, it's a great, it's great, but we know about the other silos in Victoria and we haven't done that trail, but we certainly want to. Have you ever crashed these things? No. 
That's really good to know. Because we're up very high. I've spent a lot of time on these things in my time, <laughs> if you can imagine. That's good. We get lots of flying hours. Guido works with acrylic spray paint and sometimes rollers. I'm just adding a bit of texture to the shirt just underneath the collar. Um, yeah, because, I mean, I think it already looks good, like, shade-wise from down below, but I'm just trying to, like, make it a bit more textured. How do you go with the sort of attention that you get in a town like this, where people are stopping all the time and you've got media and all that sort of thing? Um, it doesn't bother me. Like, I, I'm... That's not my motivation, so I just kind of... I wouldn't say ignore it, but it's not its not really in my focus. You know, I've got a job to do and I'm just so absorbed by it that I'm only thinking about this, you know. As he gets to grips with the shapes and surface of the silos, the first few portraits always take the longest. So it's another week before little Blake takes shape. The six-year-old is fairly unfazed by the attention. So we told him that he's going to be on there, and he was just like, oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I showed too... him last night, and uh, he goes, oh, that's me. <laughs> but where's my face? <laughs> Over the following fortnight, other figures appear. Well, the beauty of the, having children up there is that they are still developing their personality and, and who they are. And I think them walking past it every day and seeing that, that they were involved in this process is another important thing. And I hope, yeah, it inspires young people to know that there is a path through creative industries. This is nine-year-old Sierra, who was photographed in the schoolyard a few weeks earlier. He nearly done. Is he begging? Five-year-old Reef is the middle child. And lively little Macy stretches her way up the Adelaide end of the structure. All but one are fourth-generation Canalpin kids. I hope that they and the community will think, well, you know, we're the future of this town and um, it's up to us as to where the, the town goes, how they'll actually feel about who is actually up there, I'm not, not too sure, but I think they'll be generally happy for the students who've been chosen. Um, might be a little bit of, you know, I wish it was me, but I think generally that they're, they're fairly forgiving kids and they're kids that support each other. It is early days, but the council believes this arts-led recovery is already achieving its dual goals of stimulating business and bringing some pride back to the Canalpin community. The buzz and the hype around the town is exciting. Um, everyone is excited about it. Even the farmers who probably thought that public art would not make an impact are very, very impressed. The social benefits of these sort of community arts projects are enormous and we've already seen a massive shift in terms of civic pride and community connecting with each other. Canalpin might have been down, but certainly not out, and the community have rallied behind all of these projects to be able to see them come to fruition.